Welcome everyone, Dylan Jamelli here today with a brand new video for you. Now, I've done a video in the past on SARMs versus steroids, but in this video we're going to break down the capability of your gains, SARMs versus steroids. So I'm going to talk about the differences here and what you kind of generally expect. But before we get into that, just a big shout out and thank you to everybody out there watching and supporting the channel. I cannot thank you enough. If you haven't yet, please like, sub, share, comment, any interaction with the channel. It helps the channel to grow and it allows me to produce more and more content for you each and every day. Also, today's video is sponsored by letsgetcheck.com. Now, letsgetcheck.com specializes in at-home blood testing. All you have to do is go to their website, check out all of their different tests. They have everything wellness, hormonal for men and women. They have it all. Just look through, pick out what you want, order it. They're going to ship you your kits in the mail. All you have to do is register the kit online, provide the sample, ship it back. They're going to notify you by email extremely fast with your results. And they've got doctors and nurses there to take your questions and concerns. So it's it's an awesome, awesome experience, service. It's, it's, it's one of the best rated that you're going to find. So coupon code Jamelli30 is going to save you 30% off. Let's get check.com. All right. So, all right. I want to dig into the capability of gains with SARMs versus steroids. Now let's understand this. There's certain SARMs and certain steroids that are, you're going to have a better chance of keeping your gains. So for example, a steroid that converts to estrogen at a high rate like a D-ball. You're going to gain a lot of extra water weight, which you are never going to keep, and a lot of that's going to go away. So initially, you may have a 15, 20-pound gain. A lot of people do. A lot of people maybe 10, but generally over 10. You're not going to keep a lot of that, meaning that a lot of it's just water that's going to be expelled uh, from your body and dissipate, sweat it out, peed out. Um, not to say you can't keep gains from D-ball, because you most certainly can, but you have to understand that we're looking at total overall keepability. And with that, you are going to see this drastic increase. But in the end, what you actually keep out of that, eh. Now, mind you, when you're having that big of a weight gain and fluctuation, that's hard on your body. And a steroid like D-Ball that's highly toxic is hard on your liver, kidneys, you know, et cetera, all of your other organs. So you have to factor that into play. It's suppressive. So there's a lot that's going into that on top of is it worth it in the end for what you actually get from it? Now you're going to get a ton of strength. You're going to feel like a god on D-ball So while you're using it. But that's why I say, is it worth it? The risk versus the reward for what you ultimately get from it and obtain from it. Um, you know, something like Anivar, where you're not going to keep the strength the muscle hardening, so to speak, but you could definitely have a better chance of keeping gains with that in terms of, you know, some of the lean muscle that you're gaining and you're, you still, it's not like you use Anivar and don't gain a pound or don't get strength, especially like in a small, like when I'm using Anivar, I'm at a smaller weight now. So I do always put on four or five pounds with it. And that's because I'm a little bit lower on the weight than normal. But you can, most people, you're going to get two to three pounds of lean muscle. And if you get that on it, that's damn good. And that's very keepable in the end. If you run the right PCT, don't abuse the dose, et cetera. There's a lot that goes into that. Um, but it depends on the steroid that you're using on the keepability. You should not expect to keep Masteron hardening, Winstrol hardening. Some of the Winstrol hardening, Masteron is just like so uh, purely aesthetic. Um, you know, DECA gains when you're gaining a lot of size and anadrol gains, but also some unwanted weight in the process, chances are, or some, you know, unwanted water, etc. That you're not, you're going to have a, and the harsher the steroid, the much more difficult the recovery, meaning that's going to be much more difficult to keep the gains. It's not always just about the size, you know, it's, it's about the draining that it's doing on your system. So if you have a prolonged recovery and it's taking you longer to recover, the keepability of your gains, the probability of that is quite low. Any long duration of recovery is going to result in a lot, lot, lot less of overall total gain. Now with SARMs, you're not going to get that huge 20 pound D-ball gain. All right. You're not, you know, something like carterine that's drastically increasing your VO2 max. You're obviously not going to be able to continuously increase your VO2 max forever once you stop taking it. You know, so there's there's things like that. But with something like LGD4033 or 3303, which is extremely dry, it's almost like a super draw without the side effects. You know, cut it in half on this side and what you're going to get. I'm just saying in comparison to the steroid world. 
Think about super draw is super dry. You get a lot of size. You get extremely strong, but you have the the worst side effects on the planet. Well, 3303 in the SARMs world, you're getting extremely extreme size. Over 10 pounds for a SARM is extreme size. You know, over 20 pounds with the steroid is extreme size. So you you know think about it in that manner. Um, and with the SARM, you're getting a ton of strength, except with this one, you're not getting any of the toxic side effects and you actually feel good on it. It's going to be suppressive and it's going to be suppressive like a steroid, which is very few SARMs. S23 and, and uh, 3303 are the ones that are suppressive like a steroid. But you're going to get so much more with having to deal with so much less. And in the end, your recovery is going to be a lot easier, especially with LGD4033, which you could definitely get that size with. And so the capability is going to be a lot, lot more likely. Now, also, mind you, I don't care what you're using. Capability is also going to be diet dependent and training dependent once you're off the cycle. I'm just saying with the proper post-cycle therapy, doing all the right things, which is the assumption here, that, you know, while the onset gain of steroids is going to definitely be bigger than SARMs is, the ultimate finality of that cycle And that's talking after your PCT is done and you start to recover and what you actually keep. You're going to end up keeping more with the steroids or with the SARMs and having to go through a lot less than you did with steroids. You're just, if you only care, and this this pertains to some people, if you only care about right then and there what you're getting from it, nothing long term, no none of the side effects, the recovery, but just right in that period of time when you're on them, then you definitely want to go with steroids. If you care about what you actually keep, the overall experience, how you recover, how you feel later, what you keep later, how you're going to actually recover later and feel later, you definitely want the SARMs. So I guess it's, uh, do you care about your long-term, your health, what you're going to keep long-term, what you're going to be able to do long-term, or are you, uh, I don't give a shit about any of that, I just want it right now, and it's only important for this period of time, or I'm only living one day at a time, and I'm not thinking about the future. That's how you have to look at it. And that's just factual. Understand that by getting more with something, you're actually going to get less in the long run, is my point. Now, some people will say, well, steroids have been around for ever, and SARMs have been around, well, studies dating back into the 90s. So people say, you know, they don't know long term with them, which is fair. Uh, but I mean, we do have quite a long period of time for a lot of them, not all of them. Some of them that are newer, I do understand that. And so it's hard to say with certainty. And it's hard to say with certainty with anything. Um, so that's a, that's another thing to consider. I want to be as fair and transparent as possible. And so some people will argue that's plenty of time. And some people will say that's not even close to enough time. It's I'm not going to say what I was going to say. <laughs> I should probably not say that. Um, I was going to compare it to something else that went on recently. And that's all I'm going to say. Um, but... I just want everybody to understand the differences and especially with the capability gains. And it it does come down to the compounds as well. There's going to be different. That's why I gave you a few different examples on what's more capable than not. I'm just saying in general, with just a normal average size building like a T-ball or an MK2866 or an RAD14, like these that don't carry a bunch of water or unwanted, you know, look at those equally. You're going to definitely end up retaining more with the SARMs. Um, when it's all said and done. And that's also thinking about recovery, you know, how you'll bounce back, what's harder on, on your body, etc. So that's where it's at with that. Just so everybody understands, you're going to get more with one initially, but you're going to pay for it later. You are not going to get as much with one, but in the end, you're probably going to keep more of what you got from that than you would have on the other end and not deal with a fraction of the problems and issues that could arise. So that's where we're at. That being said, stay tuned for plenty more to come. Dylan Jamelli signing off.